all the banks are broke. Uh, Bank Santander, Deutsche Bank, Royal Bank of Scotland, they're all broke. And why are they broke? It isn't an act of God. It isn't some sort of tsunami. They're broke because we have a system called fractional reserve banking, which means that banks can lend money that they don't actually have. It's a criminal scandal, and it's been going on for too long. To add to that problem, you have moral hazard, a very significant moral hazard from the political sphere. And most of the problem starts in politics and central banks, which are part of the same political system. We have counterfeiting, sometimes called quantitative easing, but counterfeiting by any other name. The artificial printing of money, which if any ordinary person did, they'd go to prison for a very long time. And yet governments and central banks do it all the time. Central banks repress the amount of interest that rate, rates are, so we don't have the real cost of money. And yet we blame the real retail banks for manipulating LIBOR. The sheer effrontery of this is quite astonishing. It's central banks. It's central banks that manipulate interest rates, Commissioner. And plus, underneath all this, we talk loosely, in a rather cavalier fashion, do we not, about deposit guarantees. So when banks go broke through their own incompetence and chicanery, the taxpayer picks up the tab. It's theft from the taxpayer. And until we start sending bankers, and I include central bankers and politicians, to prison for this outrage, it will continue. Hey everyone, it's Versan. I hope you're all doing well. I've been crazy busy these last few days researching other topics, but I have some important things I want to discuss with you. So that video was pretty terrifying, but it is the truth that real criminals are the central banks with their debt-based system. Experience has demonstrated time and again that when central banks undermine the value of its currency, bad things happen. And in the last six months alone, the Federal Reserve has continually devalued our dollars. And just like a virus corrupts information, an unstable currency can easily distort global markets. So without getting into too much detail of the central banks, let's take a broad perspective of what the central banks are doing. They are continuing to send money to a war that we never voted for, and bear in mind that's taxpayer money. Yet at home, we have American people who can't even make ends meet. So what are they continually doing is looking for reasons to inflate the debt market by printing money out of thin air, simultaneously raising interest rates into a recession, which has never been done before. And like Robert Kiyosaki said, this is deliberate. Now let's look ahead. At some point, something massive is going to break because central banks are running the currency into the ground very fast. A major black swan event will occur and it will catch most people off guard. It'll probably start on a Friday. The banks will announce a security action necessitating their computers to go offline all weekend. Digital money will disappear. They can just steal your money? Followed by the detonation of strategic electromagnetic pulse bombs to knock out major grids. What well, will seem like an attack on America by terrorists or Russia. I believe there's going to be a false flag event and they're going to be locking down our money. It sounds very real to me, Gerald. I, it, it really does. It's um, amazing that you brought that up. Yeah, people, it's it's a frightening prospect. What do you do? And why would you keep your money in the bank anyway? No, they're not giving no. you anything for it. You gotta be nuts. I tell you, no, that's the last place. They're not you giving you a penny. They're making money on your money. Why keep it there? I know. Why do you gotta? Why are you giving them your money for them to make money on when you're not making any money on it, and they'll lock it down like that? What a scheme, right? What a scheme, it's true. And all this in order to usher in the new financial system. Something has to break before they can introduce a new system. Simultaneously, while all this craziness is going on, we have some very interesting developments out of the UK. I'm sure most of you already know and have heard that we have a new prime minister of the UK, which is Rishi Sunak. You have to keep a very close eye on this guy. I've said this before, and he is an advocate for CBDC adoption and for Ripple. Not to mention he's also a puppet of the World Economic Forum. I personally believe he's going to be the one to begin the switch to CBDC adoption as the UK financial crisis worsens. In the UK earlier this year, I announced a new joint task force between the Treasury and the Bank of England to look into a potential CBDC as a complement to cash and bank deposits. We're also hearing from firms, technology experts and others. Under the leadership of the UK, this report today 
will help support and inform exploration of CBDCs in the G7 and beyond. And what's really interesting is that XRP price actually soared as the dollar weakened substantially in the last two days. I mean, what kind of signal was that? Is it actually possible that XRP can replace the dollar as it implodes on itself due to recklessness at the central bank level? It's just a playful thought. I know many people are going to get crazy on me for that. As additional insurance, if I'm right, and I, I think the signs are everywhere that we're heading towards a different monetary system, bifurcated or multiple... Right currencies, then you want to own something that's going to have to be revalued. And, they, and I can walk you through the numbers, how that revaluation would work. Based on everything we've been discussing so far, let's take a look at the global economic outlook as this all plays out. All this shit I've been covering is designed, and I say designed because it is. This is not an accident and you need to embed that into your thinking and your thought process. In the past year alone, home prices have leaped over 30% and the cost of all goods is up 10%. Families are paying an additional up to $5,000 more this year alone. And of course, average hourly earnings by contrast are about down by 3.7% when adjusted for inflation. So everyone needs to really wake up. I mean, that's it. There are no more savings. It's almost impossible to save money at this point. And once you see a 10% crack in inflation, I mean, something is going to break. And people all around the world are slowly waking up and asking themselves a very important question. What is money? What's the value? What is a store of value? And I'll tell you right now, it's not Bitcoin. Well, for those that don't know, the biggest change to our financial system in 50 years is actually going to occur this November. All international payments are moving to the blockchain, ISO 222. And many investors out there, like us, are looking to reap massive returns as this 50-year-old international payment system moves onto the blockchain beginning of November 2022. This is part of what we know as the ISO 222, a single standardization approach that's going to be used by all financial standard initiatives. And some of these blockchains that meet the criteria are XRP, XLM, XDC, IOTA, and Algorand. Everything we've been talking about is gradually playing out, and I'm very excited to see what happens next. IMF bailouts are, are high, at a record high right now. Everybody's going, yeah, we wouldn't mind an alternative currency to the U.S. dollar. And for the global South, those that are not in conflict with each other, like the West, Russia, China Act, for the global South, the Indias, the Brazils, the rest, they would love to have a separate alternative trading currency where they can choose to trade with both. They can trade with the US dollar or trade with that, whatever that thing ends up looking like. And that when it happens, and it will happen in some way, and it's going to, I doubt it's going to be by consensus. It's going to happen. It's going to be forced upon the US dollar. And then things will change and the US dollar will lose its status as the supreme dominant wow. currency. We're even starting to see Ripple ads show up all over Wall Street. This is also happening in London, where the new prime minister is already pushing for CBDC adoption. As always, we need to keep a close eye on the central banks and the geopolitical issues, because that's where we're going to find the right indicators that may give us some insight into what can come next. In my opinion, as the economic crisis worsens worldwide, I think crypto will mature, government regulation will intercede, and adoption worldwide will play out as nations look for a neutral ground level playing field technology, which is XRP. As always, I really appreciate all my subscribers, and I promise you, we're all going to make it through this. You just need to be on top of everything.